Hi everyone, great to be here today and we're glad that you're listening in. My name is Amanda Chamberlain and this is Holly Howarth. And we were really excited to do this process control project. We focused on a heart pacemaker, which was really important. And the reason we did this is because Holly has actually been doing a lot of research with one of our professors here at BYU, Dr. Cook. And we're excited to have her on the team with her help and background and also um, with the help of Dr. Cook. So a pacemaker um, is really important because actually nearly 200,000 individuals within the United States require the use of a pacemaker to help regulate their heart. But with that, there's often going to be some concerns like how quickly the pacemaker responds and whether or not it stays within the limits of your body. So with that, what our project is, is we focused on an individual going through a workout with the help of a pacemaker and wanted to see if we could make it respond quickly enough that the individual could do this workout and if it stayed within our, our ranges within our body. So the concentration of oxygen that's allowed in our body as well as the heart rate. So with that, let's go ahead and look at our project and see the setup of it. Here is an individual on the right that actually has a pacemaker. You can kind of see the location of that. And how the pacemaker works is when the heart rate is kind of weak, the pacemaker will send an electrical signal to the heart that causes it to, to contract, and that's how um, blood is pumped through your system. So for our project, we focused on the desired O2 concentration level of 90 to 100%. Our set point was actually 97.25, and we'll kind of discuss that in a minute. With a workout, you want your desired heart rate to be between 120 and 180 beats per minute. So that was another limit that we had to be sure we didn't pass or um, go below. And then finally, our project, we did a 60-minute workout, and we assumed a 10-minute warm-up with a 40 steady workout of 40 minutes, and then a cool down of about 10 minutes. And um, for this project, we actually did a lot of research and we found some literature values that we use for our heart rate PID controller, our heart and our pacemaker, which I'll point out on the next slide. So here is the block diagram that we actually used in MATLAB using Simulink. And I wanted to point out a couple things. The first is this disturbance. And here's a diagram of it. This is our, the concentration of oxygen within your body. And the first 10 minutes you can kind of see is this, this downward slope um, and that is when you're exercising the concentration of oxygen in your body decreases with your exercise. So as you warm up there's the decrease right there. As you're working out um, we assumed a steady workout so it's constant and then your cool down you're able to regain that oxygen in your, in your blood. Um, and that's kind of why you breathe harder and faster as you work out so you can try to get that oxygen in your body. The second part is this inner loop. So we have a cascade controller where we have an outer loop and an inner loop. This inner loop we got from the literature and it is, um, it's regulating our heart rate. So you can kind of see the mirror image of the response of the heart controller, the pacemaker, um, to our disturbance. So as the oxygen concentration in your blood decreases, the heart rate increases to try to keep the concentration of oxygen um, within the, the range that we've set. And finally, the focus of our project was on this outer loop, the concentration of O2. So kind of looking at it, you on the left is our, is our set point, and then as we go through, you have the PI controller, um, and then a few transfer functions that that go between our units of, of milliamps to beats per minute and so forth. Um, and the value that we saw in Simulink is here. And we're going to zoom in on that, but you can kind of see we have disturbances plotted, but we'll focus on the set point and how our controller responded. So Holly's going to take it from here. Okay, so you can see the response of our controller here over the 60 minute workout. And so, um, because this is in deviation variable, zero is 95% O2 concentration. So as you can see, they're well within um, the healthy range for O2 concentration. And so um, one of the things we thought was important um, when we zoom in here um, for to the first 30 seconds of the workout is that we wanted to make sure that it quickly went up to the desired O2 concentration. So there's about a 50% overshoot, but we felt like that was fine because um, it doesn't matter if there's more overshoot because it doesn't matter if there's more O2 concentration in the body. 
and as you can see it um, gets up to the set point within five seconds so um, they will be just fine with the amount of O2 concentration during their workout. Um, so you can see in the 60 minute workout it's not quite at the set point during the warm up and cool down periods um, but it's still within acceptable levels of O2 concentration and that was what was most important for our subject to so that they would not require medical attention during their workout. So in conclusion, um, we successfully controlled the heart rate in order to get our O2 concentration within the healthy limits. It responded quickly. Um, we balanced um, aggression in this, controller aggression in this case to get our desired results. And we believe that um, adjustments could be made for an individual patient because um, a doctor could take O2 concentration readings at different um, levels and that way um, our controller, our model would stay the same and they would just adjust for the individual patient's needs. So. Uh, and here are our references. Um, just want to acknowledge the papers that we used to do this project. Thanks for listening.